Hey, this is the Old Gaming Geezer. Welcome to episode 21 of the Indeterminate Stuff. And here we have the Satanta in orbit around the moon of Lathe, the Julian moon. And out from the Satanta comes Nelvis Kerman, who carefully works his way around those three large solar panels. There's supposed to be four of them. In fact, if you remember from last episode, there used to be four of them. So Nelvis makes his way down to the Charybdis space plane, which is going to be making its way down to the surface of Jule, and you can see one of the moons, sorry, to the surface of Lathe, and you can see one of the other Julian moons off in the background. I'm not sure what that is. I think it might be Val. I'm not too sure. Out then comes Cadmus Kerman. Cadmus is also going to make his way down, and Cadmus is also very careful to avoid those large solar panels. Uh, Cadmus makes his way down to the Charybdis as well. We're going to take both of these guys down together. Cadmus carefully positions himself and gets inside. And so now, uh, I need to just make sure that we've got uh, enough RCS in the tanks for this. We're not going to show that. It's going to be a while. So we're in quite an inclined orbit around Lathe, because really I don't want to waste enough the fuel circularizing the orbit. So we're going to drop the Charybdis at the highest point in our orbit and maneuver him down to uh, using the minimum fuel possible and land on an island on the equator. So there we have the Charybdis slowly making its way as it disconnects from the Satanta. And we have separation. The Charybdis is clear. And so after making sure all of our fuel tanks are powered up, um, we check our engines to make sure that we are in closed cycle mode and activating the engine and preparing to do a burn. Here we go. This is our deorbit burn as we leave Satanta behind. We have now deorbited this plane, but we are very high up and we've got a long way to fall. There is Jewel off in the distance. The great jewel, the giant, the gas giant. We shall not be going close to jewel this episode, uh, but we shall we shall see about the future. So here we are coming down onto um, onto Lathe. We can see we've got those beautiful, slightly purple tinged clouds from uh, the visual enhancement mod, which is working pretty well. And as we turn around, and we have. A beautiful jewel rise in front of us. That's so awesome. Right, so we're coming close now. Uh, I have to stop and talk about the beautiful jewel rise. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Now, jewel, lathe is tidally locked to jewel. So jewel uh, doesn't move in the sky at all in comparison to lathe. Because the same side is always pointing directly at lathe. At jewel, sorry. So, um... And I deliberately chose a landing area where we could see Jewel from the ground. Because, you know, if you're going to land on a moon of an enormous gas giant, you want to land on a side where you're actually going to be able to see the gas giant, right? Am I right? Am I right? So we are approaching now. We are down to 40 kilometers up. We should be seeing some uh, re-entry effects fairly soon. I'm doing a little science from the... Uh, Science pod I've got on the nose of this thing. That science pod, I think, is from the B9 Aerospace pack. Uh, I'm still using B9 Aerospace version 4. Uh, I'm checking all of my science equipment to see can I do any high altitude science from here as we start to ionize the atmosphere around us as we slam into it at high speed. And here we are, coming down. There is the island that we plan on landing on. And look at those flames. Oh my god. <laughs> Luckily, uh, there's no um, re-entry damage in this game. I'm not using uh, the deadly re-entry mod or anything like that. Uh, because this is one extra thing I really don't want to have to worry about because I'm... As you've seen me so far, I've had a lot of trouble with this game. But here we go. Uh, there's a couple of lakes there to our right. Uh, we may be able to investigate those lakes. Depending on what our fuel situation is like... Um, I'm not sure. I know that these planes can do single stage to orbit uh, on Kerbin, so it's easier to do it on Lathe. 
but I don't know how much extra fuel I'm going to have to do a little, maybe a little quick jaunt around. Maybe I will do a little quick jaunt around. So anyway, I'm now trying to look for a place to land. And uh, I can see off in the distance there, there's a little, what looks like a flat piece of land. So I'm going to try and make for that as we come out from under the clouds. Jewel the giant is hanging in the sky above us. So I activate my jet engines. Very glad that they actually work on lathe. I was pretty sure they would. So here we are. There's Lay through the clouds. Beautiful. So we're going to land on that flat area of ground over there. Um, at this point, I'm probably thinking I'm going to have to shut off my engines. Uh, we'll see about that fairly soon. I'm going to land very, very slowly. Lay has got a very thin atmosphere, so the wings uh, are not giving me as much lift as they would on Kerbin. So I have to be very careful how I fly this thing. So I'm just getting turnings around. I'm trying to land in a flat, as flat an area as I can find. And uh, there doesn't seem to be that many flat areas. Everything seems to be quite rolling. Rolling hills, high mountains. Um, but we're running out of land. Um, and I don't want to use up too much fuel. So I decide that this is the area. So we're going down here. So I cut my engines. Extend my landing gear. Turn on my landing lights. And... Uh, we're trying to slow down now. All I gotta do is slow down, keep the plane level, and uh, and try and arrest my vertical velocity, keep it as low as possible so that we're not falling too far. So I'm turning in a bit there from the, uh, from the ocean because I wanna try and land on maybe an uphill, a slight uphill. So we're getting down low and our lights from our wheelbases are now lighting up the ground below us. I can see our shadow, and it's going to start flaring. So we start to flare slightly to slow us down even more. And we're still coming down, still coming down. Turn on the brakes, flare just a just a little bit more, and we're falling very very slowly here. And we have touchdown of the space plane Charybdis on the Julian moon of Lathe. This is a historic occasion. Let's get the boys out. Let, let's get the boys out and down the ladder that is not attached to the side of the plane. <laughs> There's no ladder. I forgot to put a freaking ladder on the side of the plane. So I, I um, lowered my landing gear there to see would it be low enough for them to basically just step out. But no, it's not. I try it again. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of the guys out to collect all of the science. Um, well, I'm going to do any science experiments I need to do from here now. And I'm going to get... That was Nelvis I got out. And Nelvis is going to collect all the science from the science equipment. Uh, but we've come a long way. I think we've come way too far to... Uh, to have... To just not get out of the plane. And here we go. I'm trying to get the information from that uh, sensor pack on the nose. However, it's it predates the uh, it's from the B9 version four, and it predates to be able to take science out of out of um, science equipment. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to bring it back, or not, as the case may be. Uh, so what I've done there is I've picked up all of the science from the experiments that I did when I was high up in the atmosphere, and there I just did some more experiments on the surface and I picked up all that uh, information from the science gear so now it's time quick check of my um, of my thrusters there on my thruster suit and now it's time to get off the plane and uh, well the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do an EVA report from the surface of lathe yes and then we're gonna take a surface sample fantastic we've got it all we're, we're now what we need to do is get back on the plane but before we do that though I think we're going to have to, to plant a flag. What do you think? So we plant a flag. Cadmus Kerman, plant your flag. So, what does he say? Cadmus Kerman, on lathe. On the surface of lathe. Excellent. <laughs> and, yeah, hopefully we can get back on the plane without a ladder. Well, we'll see. Next, that's what we got to do next. We got to see if we get back on the plane without a ladder. And uh, so I figure I got a plan here. We jump and we jetpack and we manage to do it. Not the easiest thing in the world because you can't jump when you don't have the jetpack uh, activated. So I had to jump, activated the jetpack, 
and then Jet at the same time. So obviously it works, so Nelvis comes out. And look at that, isn't that beautiful? The beautiful giant of jewel in the, in the horizon above us. That's fantastic. <laughs> so this is only the second time I've ever landed a, uh, successfully landed somebody on jewel, so I'm pretty happy with it. Now we're four kilometers away from the ocean. So I figure that Nelvis needs a little bit of a run. So Nelvis heads off the long four kilometer run that I did at four times physics acceleration in the game. Runs off to the ocean and it's quite a long way as you can see. But uh, yeah, it's not that far. But eventually we make it to the ocean and uh, Nelvis is uh, Nelvis is pretty glad that we finally make it. So we slow back down to normal speed even though I'm playing all of this at double speed. So Nelvis has arrived at the shore of the of the ocean. I think we're going to call this, uh, this uh, I don't know, Nelvis Bay, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So um, so Nelvis goes for a swim. See, does he float? Yes, he floats. Nelvis floats in the strange waters of this alien world. <laughs> mm, that might be my icon. I'll have to decide. If it's my icon, then I was right. If it's something else, then... I decided not to use something else. <laughs> so, uh, Nelvis floats up to his neck on the uh, waters of Lathe. That's a pretty good, um, that's a, a pretty good experiment that we've done there, so I'm pretty happy with that. So, Nelvis looks really happy with himself. He's a happy little clam. So, of course, Nelvis, now you've got to walk all the way back. It's another four kilometers back, so, uh, get to it, buddy. Get running. Let's go. So we've got to run all the way back. It took me a, a little while to run down there. Uh, it's going to take me a little while to run back. But uh, luckily, with the wonders of video editing, we can uh, chop all that out. And all of a sudden, we're back at the airplane. Wow, that's amazing. But while we've gone, night has fallen. Um, um, I'm using the um, ambient light adjustment mod here. Otherwise, everything would be black here. Now, did you, know, did you notice that Cadmus there... Uh, something was wrong with Cadmus, and while I get Nelvis back on the plane, I gotta go back to Cadmus. Cadmus is frozen. He cannot move. Is this some weird Lathian disease he's got? He can slide around on his feet, but he cannot move. He is stuck at a T-pose. But, oh, he jumped up on the plane, and it looks like he broke something. He is stuck in a pose... We have to get him back. There is obviously some serious medical emergency going on here. Cadmus Kerman. <laughs> dangerous, dangerous, dangerous alien disease. But it's nighttime. We're not going to attempt to leave Lathe during night, so the boys will sleep. Sleep through the Lathian nighttime. Meanwhile, on the space plane Scylla, Randall and Chadbury. Chadbury Kerman? are going to uh, going to come down and land on another island. Again, we have a perfect separation, carefully moving our space plane away from the solar panels, of which we only have three left. And uh, then we start to move towards, move away from the, from the, from the Satanta. And we are going to do our deorbit burn very, very soon. We've already checked our engines. Uh, well, I think we've already checked our engines. I can't quite recall. We checked our engines and we came back down. So <laughs> that was a cut there I forgot about. So we're coming down. I didn't probably just didn't bother showing the entire thing again. So we are rapidly approaching, coming down through the fiery atmosphere of Lathe. Now we are trying to get to those islands that we can see on the horizon here. I'm trying to slow down a little bit. Um, I was thinking I was going to go... Uh, go south, but I decided I'd probably be better off going north, so quickly turning around, I'm trying to get my um, velocity vector moved slightly north because I want to land on that island, basically. Uh, and so we are turning around as we slow down, our wings cut through the air better, uh, capture the air better, or I don't know the word for it, but we're able to maneuver better the slower we're going. So um, we are coming around and. Um, we're going to land on this island. Now, we're a couple of hundred kilometers away from the island where uh, Nelvis and Camdas are. So Randall and Shadbury are going to be on their own on this island. So, uh, now I was thinking I might land. You can see on the right there, there is a small bay. I was thinking I might land at that bay. 
But I decided instead to land on the... There's this little plateau there on the left, which I'm going to land on. That's a beautiful view from inside. This is the Space Plane Plus mod, which is now officially part of the game. But this is still the mod, because I'm still using an old version of Kerbal Space Program to run the indeterminate stuff. I'm using 0.24, I think. Uh, 0.24.2, actually, yeah. Um, I have played a little bit of 0.25, but not very much. Uh, I tested out my save game in that, and I could not really get it to work without breaking all of my ships. So we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be sticking with this version. We will not be updating for the moment. So we are bringing Randall and Chadbury Kerman down. I am trying to lose height because, you know, I've said before, these planes with the uh, forward swept wings, they actually really like to stay flying and they don't like to drop very fast, which makes it surprisingly hard to land them, I must say. And so we're coming down now. I'm going to bring this down, try and use the exact same method I used before, bring it down slowly, drop our speed as low as we can. There we go, we're extending our landing gear, our lights are shining up the ground above us, and we flare to slow our descent. Everything's looking real good. The landscape is a little bit more, uh, it's not quite as flat as it looked from up high, but I think we'll be okay. We're going to try and land on this little hill in front of us, so we flare, flare to slow ourselves down. We're actually rising slightly now, but that's okay because the land is rising below us. But we're slowing down, and down we go. Oh my god! Oh, oh, we have some serious problems. We have had a crash on the moon of Lathe. They are so far away from, from, from help. Uh, this is a huge emergency. Oh no, Randall and Chadbury Kerman are stuck on the surface of Lathe. If I get them out of the plane, they won't be able to get back in. This is a enormous disaster. The boys back in Mission Control need to figure out a way to save these guys. They need to figure out a way to save them fast. Oh my god. <laughs> this is terrible. Oh no, oh no. Uh, guess who hadn't quick saved before doing this? Uh, that would be me, folks. So we've got a huge problem. We've got to get these guys back. I have no way to pick them up with the other plane. So we need a plan. We also need money to affect this plan, so quickly, back on Kerbin. The boys in the Space Center uh, quickly do um, a quite a lucrative little experiment, actually, to test a nuclear engine, which they've been using all along, uh, in the, uh, on a suborbital flight around Kerbin. Okay, what could be easier than that? Not a lot. Uh, so we do the test, and we almost screw it up, because we fire the engine and everything seems fine, but we didn't do the test. We did everything we were supposed to, but nothing worked, and so I'm really confused now. I don't know what the hell's going on. And then I spot something. Up in the, on the right, top right of the screen, you've got the little note about the test, and there is an extra thing you have to do. You have to actually select the object and do run test from the, there's obviously some sort of inbuilt test on it, so I need to wait till we fall back down to uh, 86,000 meters above the surface and then run the test like I did there. We got it. Now we have the money for to do our rescue mission. <sighs> oh my God, this is so exciting. It's so scary. So we got to get, oh, Jebediah of course does the test because who else is going to do this test in this life or death situation? Bloody Jebediah Kerbin, the hero, the hero himself. Jebediah parachutes down. We can see the, uh, the, 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 the nuclear rocket behind parachuting down. Also, we wanted to save as much money as we can because, quite frankly, we need every penny to save Randall and Chadbury, who are stuck, marooned on the surface of Lathe. What shall we do? And so here we have the ship that I have built to go out to Lathe. Now, this is so over-engineered. It's got that little lander there. That lander is going to land down on Lathe. Randall and Chadbury are going to get into it, and it's going to be a single... Well, it's not going to be a single stage to orbit. It's going to fly up into Lathe orbit, and there we drop our first stage. But it's got an enormous amount of fuel, because that huge rocket, it's only uh, bringing that lander. There's a small transfer uh, stage in there as well, in case I need it. So most of the fuel that you still see on this as we get into Kerbin orbit, most of that fuel is going to be used to bring it out to Lathe. But that will be in our next episode. For now, this is the old Gaming Geezer signing off. 
Good night, farewell, Avida Zane, adieu.